Hello guys, welcome to the Software Engineering channel. In today's video, I plan to show you everything I've been working on as regards building an NGROC clone using Rust. Um, I know it's been a while, but trust me, I've actually been doing research on Rust because I do not know anything about Rust. And since we are going to be building an NGROC clone using Rust, it means I had to do a lot of learning. I had to learn things like TCP, sockets, listeners, streams, and all of those things. I'll be showing you everything today and everything I've learned about Rust, where we are at and where we're looking at getting into. How about we dive right in, guys? Alright, so if you have not watched this particular video, you need to have a look at it. That's the first video. That's the first video that started this episode. In that particular video, I dissected how Ngrok actually works. Because I mean I figured if I'm going to be creating a clone of it, it means I need to know how it works, right? So you need to check out that video. Check out that video. Everything I'm going to be learning as regards um Ngrok. And I'm also going to be learning as regards the Rust programming language. It's going to be towards building this, right? So you need to check it out. Like for real, you really need to check it out. All right. So one of the one of the reasons why Rust has a very steep learning curve is basically because of um, its approach to garbage collection, right? So for high level languages like C plus C sharp. And, and the likes garbage collection is done for you behind the scenes so you necessarily do not need to worry about um allocation the allocation and all of those stuff memory leaks and the likes because behind the scene there is a garbage collector that clean up your mess right it's able to clean up your mess right and on the other extreme you have things language like c you have language like c <clears throat> right where you actually have to take care of your garbage by yourself right so you have to do things like allocation and deallocation and it's prone to memory leaks and, and and the likes right so rust sits right in the middle right rust sits right in the middle so for rust it uses a very tight type checking approach to take care of all of those and that, that's what makes it beautiful and at the same time a little bit difficult to learn. I had to learn things like mutability, ownership, referencing, and borrowing. It's just a whole lot. The next thing I did was to write a particular application, right? Pick up a random project and see how to get my hands dirty with it. And the first thing I worked on was an application that helps you get songs, that helps you check for a song album using spotify api that's my i mean other i mean imperfect projects this looks like my very first perfect project so yeah there, there are a lot of things going on here um things like structs you want to see structs like classes right so for c sharp you usually have classes to represent your models what Rust uses structs. Tokyo. Tokyo is the main one. Tokyo is actually used for a lot of things in Rust. <laughs> Tokyo looks like a main thing in Rust. Basically, you can use Tokyo for enabling async and await. I think that, that was what I used it to do over here. Um, it does a lot of things as well. It gives you access to um, network APIs, CCPs and all of those things, which I will show you in a particular project I took on, actually. So, yeah, with Rust, you have to be very specific and you have to be explicit um, with your declaration. Uh, that's why you have things like BEC. BEC um, is more like a list. So if you're coming from a high level programming language, you would usually use things like lists, but in Rust, you use VEC. So basically what I'm trying to do is to 
collect arguments because this is this is a command line program right so you basically type in the album you want to search for in your command line so what this does is to collect the arguments and um, it also collects a token because you have to get a token from Spotify so it collects the token it collects the search query and then it calls Spotify's API to search for that particular album or song. So all of this is just um, me making an HTTP call. It does all the result passing and and also, I mean, I can run this for you to see. So I simply do cargo bro. Okay, so um, after um, some seconds of waiting, I came across this particular error. Uh, <laughs> now is actually not a good time to check it out. I plan to check it out after now. Okay, so immediately I completed this particular this particular project. I felt it was time for me to embark on the Engrok project. However, I deceived myself. The first thing I did was to go to GitHub and check out different projects in that same light. And immediately I found out that uh, I probably still needed to do a lot of work. The first clone, the first project I cloned that has to do with this uh, was this particular project, Storm Grok. So what he's trying to do is to create a version of Ngrok using Rust. Um, however, opening this particular project, <laughs> I almost cried. <laughs> I, I almost cried because I literally was not able to say what's happening, right? So I knew I needed to. I needed to still learn a lot of things, right? Um, the concept of um, networking the concept of sockets um writing servers listening to servers handling incoming requests and all of the stuff because come to think about it ngrok is basically low level networking tool right you're trying to have a particular server that is able to listen for incoming requests and it is able to handle that incoming request it is able to speak back to your local machine to get the response for the incoming request and then pass the results to the clients who initiated that tcp connection so basically it's all low level networking stuff so i knew i needed to do a lot of work um on how to write servers how to listen for requests so so i embarked on this particular project called echo server an echo server is basically an application that allows a client and the server to connect so as to send a particular message. But what the server does is it duplicates whatever message you send to it back to you. That's what it does. So if you initiate any request, whatever it is, the server is going to give you, is going to respond with what you sent. So I knew this was a good project to learn about servers, so I embarked on this particular project. Yeah, basically the idea is to implement an echo server using Tokyo. I let out to use Tokyo because I needed the server to be multi-threaded, meaning multiple clients can connect to the server and the server is able to have the request at the same time and provide response. This is what we have. Um, it's a simple concept. This is where the work actually lies. So what this does is it creates a TCP listener and it's listening to a particular port, port 127, which is your local host. Um, listening to a particular IP rather um, on a particular port 3000. Um, I need to obviously make this dynamic so the user is able to 
specify what port they want to listen to and yeah just as the server runs it's an endless loop trying to listen for requests and then it handles the request the request obviously comes in stream in in tcp stream format and then we have a particular function called echo stream so what this echo stream basically does is to undo the incoming stream and it's coming from your requests if that makes sense right and yeah so basically what it does is to echo back whatever it is the client send to you let's test it out while that is building i'm going to split my terminal so that i can as well connect to that server okay so the server is currently listening for requests so i'm going to use a particular tool called netcat okay so it's listening at the moment so i'm going to use a tool called netcat to to initiate the connection to this server um netcat takes the ip you want to connect to and it also takes the ports okay so what this means is that this particular client has connected to this server all right so you will notice that we got a message immediately saying handling a request stream from this particular address so my server is able to recognize the fact that a client had connected to it if that makes sense and so we can easily send a request um for now we are sending a request in terms of string so i can do hello world All right so you can see that we got the same thing back and that's that's the way it works basically So that's the concept of an echo server and it is so beautiful in the sense that you can connect multiple clients to this but i'm obviously not going to be going that route for now so i haven't understood the basics of rust and everything that has to do with not everything but i mean most of the things that has to do with um, networking servers tcp stream tcp listeners tokyo and the likes i think the next thing i'm going to be doing is to actually embark on the engbrook clone project proper i'm going to be walking you through the project i should be able to demo a particular part of the project to you hopefully in the next video it's a software engineering channel where i try out my hands on all things software engineering and I speak about them in public. If that makes sense to you, do all to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon as well to get notification each time I drop a new video. See you in the next one. Peace.